if you guys did not take anything from this video anything at all this tip is very important and that is hi everyone welcome back to my channel if you're new here my name is denise i am a registered nurse and wow i haven't made a video a sit down video in a long time so um work in pre-op pack you today i'm super excited to share with you guys the top 10 tips for pre-op nurses whether you're fresh out of nursing school or you're transitioning from another specialty like i was these tips will help you get very comfortable hit the ground running just pretty much make your pre-op care and experience more smoother and efficient so let's get right into these very important tips little side note here you guys see me kind of looking down here and there i do have my little notebook here um just to make sure i'm not going off topic the first tip i will say that is very important is go over your patient's history before you get your patient back into the pre-op bed look through just like skim through their whole history their chart their allergies their allergies their medical record sorry the medical history surgical history and this will obviously not just help with um preventing any complications but it'll definitely help with your patient just feeling that they're in safe hands and they're comfortable the nurse is confident and trust me patients will notice when you're well prepared or when you're kind of scrambling all over the place so number two communication with anything but especially in the pre-op world communication is key communication with your patients communication with with your team um the anesthesiologist the surgeons the other staff nurses um cnas especially with your patient because when you communicate with your patients it helps kind of address any concerns that they may have because you're the first person that they see as far as like before they go to surgery and although they will have their education their surgical education surgical consent and anesthesia consent gone over by the respective um providers you are at the end of the day the person who has to make sure that these consent were understood by the patient and that the patient did not did not have any more concerns or questions after the providers have left the bedside so um you have to make sure you ask your patients if you know after they talk to the providers do they have any more concerns or questions that they want the providers to come back and re um, reinforce or re-educate or re-explain so sometimes those things do happen make sure that your patients concerns are being addressed so uh, let me know in the comments below what are your go-to phrases for calming a nervous patient because we know we get a lot of nervous patients which within reason if you're going for surgery i will be nervous um so put in the comments below if you're a nurse what are some phrases that you use that helps your patients just feel more comfortable and confident that they're in the right place they're going to be taken care of put it down in the comments below right now number three the biggest thing <laughs> the biggest thing even i was afraid of when i first started pre-op is mastering iv skills that's the biggest thing i feel like a lot of people especially if you come from part of the hospitals where you don't really get to do a lot of iv starts or if you come from a hospital where like there's vascular teams or people who are specifically designated to start IVs and you don't get to practice much and now you're transitioning into pre-op and you're like, man, I've been a nurse for like five years and I still don't know how to start IVs. That's okay. I wanna tell you that that is completely okay. Um, that was my fear. I literally was a nurse for like two years almost and never like was really bad at starting IVs. I've only done it like maybe in clinicals when I was in nursing school and maybe here and there like one or two times as a nurse. Um definitely was not confident in it and then when I went into pre-op I was kind of scared because I'm like damn like the biggest thing with this 
part of nursing, you have to be able to start IVs because all your patients that are coming in, they don't have IVs. You have to put it in. Um, well, not all. Some patients come from like the bedside and they have IVs in already. But the ones that are coming from home, they don't have any IVs. You have to put it. How do you go about that? Practice makes perfect. That is all I can say. Practice makes perfect. Like I said, you do not have to know how to start IVs to go into pre-op. Um, don't be afraid to literally get in there. Any opportunity you get, other nurses are getting patients maybe and they need help with starting IVs or whatever. Be the one to ask if they need help and go in and try to start that IV because the more you do it, the more comfortable you get, the more confident you get, you get and patients will start seeing you as like, oh, like you know what you're doing, even if that's like your fifth IV start ever since you've been a nurse. Go in there with confidence, go in there, bring all your supplies that you need, um, set up your area, and just talk through it with your patient. Like the biggest thing is talking through it with your patients, making them feel that they are calm, you're calm, and you're not gonna hurt them. That's the biggest thing because a lot of patients hate getting IV started, especially the little old ladies or the ones who are like, oh, I'm a heart stick. A lot of people have tried to get an IV in me and it takes like 50,000 people or an ultrasound. And like, I just don't want to be poked that many times. And they're like flinchy and jumpy and everything. I've had so many of those patients and then I still get it on the first try because you, and sometimes I don't. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes they're really hard sticks. But some of those patients, they tell you that. Um, because it's true, they probably were. Maybe they've just had bad luck with whoever started their IVs. And it just never happens the first time. So they have a really bad experience with IV starts. Um, so don't let that deter you and make you feel like you're not good enough to start an IV on them. Still try because you will surprise yourself. You will shock yourself when you do get that IV in. And they were like, oh my gosh, nobody can ever get this. Like, it's such a great feeling because sometimes, like I said, it's not, it's not, it's not the patient. It's sometimes is the person who is putting that IV in. And sometimes you can get lucky. Like I said, IV starts, I always tell my patients, it's one of those things you either you get it or you don't. Because we're doing it blindly. We're just feeling the vein. We're doing it blindly, um, so it's not something that I can guarantee I'm gonna get on the first time, unless like you're like very athletic male with like popping vein that you can definitely see. And even that, I had a funny story. I had a nurse friend who tried to get one from a patient who was like that, like they have very muscly veins and you can see their, their veins popping. And it was so funny because they came in next door and they were like, oh my gosh, I'm so embarrassed. I was not able to get his IV in and you can see their vein perfectly and everything. And sometimes things like that happen. It could just be maybe it was a valve that you hit and you couldn't thread the advance the catheter or it's one of those rolling veins you tried and you punctured through. Things happen. So what I'm saying is just go in there with confidence and don't overthink the skill. Just do and what you can do is what you can do. If you can't do it, you can't do it. You say, oh, I'm sorry, I wasn't able to get it the first time or the second time. Uh, I'm gonna go find somebody else who, who, who can try and see and I know they will be able to get it or I'm gonna wait and see if we can get an ultrasound to come and get it so we don't have to poke you so many times. Just things like that to make them feel comfortable. Like I said, just don't be afraid to seek out opportunities to improve on that skill because the more you run from it, the less you're gonna be confident in it. So that was one of the things I had to tell myself because I'm like, oh, I just don't want a patient to keep telling me I'm not good or um, to make me feel like I don't know what I'm doing. The more you do it, the better you get at it with anything in life. Please, if you have any tips or tricks for like starting IVs, um, you can share them in the comments below as well, just for anybody who's watching this video and they wanna learn little tips and tricks. I learn so much every day because I work with so many like older seasoned <laughs> nurses that teach me so many things. So I'm always willing to learn. So put them down below in the comments so um, we can all help each other. Tip number four um, is staying organized. 
keeping your workspace um, and patient information organized can significantly help just reduce your own stress and increase your efficiency so that you're, you know, not overworking. Pre-op is already stressful as it is when you're trying to get patients in and out and the surgeons are over here, where's my patient, you know, um, time is da 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 da, you gotta start at this time, trying to get everything in, so make sure you maintain an organized environment, you get there on time, get your stuff organized, um, your, your fluids lined up, your IV start kits lined up, your consents lined up like if your patient needs to be shaved already have that set like everything so that you're efficient you get things in you get things out and they get in they get out you get more patients in and just like that everything goes smoothly i know what helped me in the beginning when i first started in pre-op was using checklists i was taught write everything down that you need to do um per patient if you need a pregnancy test write that down. You need a IV start, write that down. You need to give them certain types of pills at this time, write that down. So I'll go on the board and I'll write it all down, put like a little box. And then once I get it done, I go check it off. Um, I did that for a little bit and then I just stopped doing it because things just started becoming routine and organized in my head. I didn't need to, I didn't really need to like write it down. Things like that you can do to help you stay organized. You can also ask your coworkers what do they do to stay organized or just observe. Honestly, sometimes the best thing to do is observing because it just helps like sometimes I'll be like if I don't have a patient and I'm just sitting down just waiting for my next patient, I'm listening. One of my preceptor told me that. That was the first thing she told me when I first started there is also just listen. Listen to how other nurses um, do their patients' questions or their process or whatever. If you have a nurse who's next door to you, just listen to what they're doing. Look at what they're doing. Look at how their process is. It helps to just kind of listen and just be open, be open and attentive to what's going on around you and how other nurses are doing their admissions, I guess I can call it. Um, I love to hear different methods of how you guys stay organized during your shifts. Um, and then number five, building rapport with your patients. Um, a friendly person, an empathetic person, uh, all of those things can make a huge difference in how comfortable your patients feel. People trust you more when they feel like they can connect to you, when they feel like you're friendly to them, especially people in their most vulnerable state. How you show up to them will make the rest of their experience in the hospital either good or bad. And you wanna be the one who helps make their experience good. They wanna be, you wanna be the one that they talk about for the rest of their stay in the hospital that, oh my gosh, my pre-op nurse was the best. Um, she made me feel so comfortable. Like I hear all the time with patients cause I do PACU as well. When I'm in PACU, after, after patients go through pre-op, they come to PACU. And once they start waking up from an anesthesia and stuff, you just hear like, oh my gosh, I had the best pre-op nurse. And they, they do say this, they will continue saying, if they had a worst experience or a bad experience, they will tell you that as well. But thankfully, uh, at the hospital I work at, literally amazing nurses. Um, it's rare like for me to hear patients complain about their nurse in pre-op or PACU. Um, so that's just the bonus. I love pre-op because you kind of have a little bit of time after like the morning first cases roll, you have a little bit of time now to talk to your patients. Cause sometimes when they come in, they have maybe 30 minutes to an hour or two while they're waiting for um, the operating room to be ready. Sometimes it could be two and a half hours, you never know. But that time you can talk to your patients. Um, there's so many stories that I hear and there's just so many new things I actually really learned from. And then you can also share a little bit about yourself um, and that depends on you. I'm very like mm, about how much you share with patients about your personal life, but just to build that comfortability level and um, trust, and just get to know your patients, literally just get to know them because they are people and they just want to be heard and listened to. And then tip number six, Learn to prioritize. So in like a busy pre-op unit, you're, you'll have a lot of patients that you need to prepare for surgery at a time. Um, thankfully where I work at, we usually the first case, you can only get at least two. 
um, two is the maximum you can get first cases. You just prioritize tasks based on urgency and importance. Learn to prioritize tasks. Prioritize tasks based on the importance of them. Tip number seven, be prepared for the unexpected. Sometimes surgery schedules can change. They can have your patient come in and then they cancel them. You can prep a patient all the way through, get them ready, give them their, give them their pre-op meds, have them sitting there waiting, and then you get a call where the provider comes, the surgeon comes by, and they're like, oh, sorry, your surgery is canceled. Or they get bumped, um, which means they the operating room had like an emergency case or something, trauma or whatever come in, and the time that your patient was gonna go in for that surgery now they can't because somebody they, they have to do the emergency case first. Um, so this could look a lot like your patient can go back to a bed space if they came from inpatient or depending on how long this bump is, it could be an hour, they could just be sitting there in pre-op waiting. Um, or if it's one of those things, it's just like multiple surgeries or a surgery that's gonna take really long for the patient to stay and wait in the pre-op room, they can just go back home and then reschedule the surgery, which sometimes it really sucks because imagine if you have to get up at like two or 3 a.m. in the morning and some patients come from like different places, literally different states, just to get to this hospital for surgery. And they'll be like, oh, I drove three hours to get here early morning and then they get canceled. So, but what I like to tell my patients, I know it sucks, but at least they're not in there as the emergency surgery or trauma or whatever the case is. Um, things, things do happen. Just calmly help your patient be calm. And some patients, they will flip out, but all you can do is be calm in those situations. Honestly, I'm curious to know what's the craziest situation that you guys have handled in pre-op, honestly. Like, there's a lot of stuff that happens in pre-op, but let me know them below. Tip number eight and nine kind of go hand in hand, so I'm just gonna talk about them both. Um, keep learning and seek mentorship. So let's talk about keep learning. Obviously, in the medical field, things are constantly evolving. evolving. You're learning so much new things and then sometimes the things you have learned in the past may not be good enough anymore in the present so you have to unlearn those and relearn a new way of doing things um, and staying updated with the latest practices and technologies all those things are crucial so it's definitely important to attend workshops go to your continuing education classes or read them online there's so many different ways you can read and the biggest thing is just never stop asking questions the moment you stop asking questions that is very troublesome always be willing to learn and seek different resources seeking mentorship um, is very very important and i think having a mentor is just important in helping you in your nursing career Ooh. There's like a little knot here, trying to kill it. There's different ways of seeking mentorship. You can ask um, an experienced colleague for advice and feedback on certain things. Just be careful who you ask as well. Be careful who you ask to be a mentor. But definitely like for me, during my preceptorship um, for pre-op, I had a really great preceptor that to this day, I consider her my mentor because she's just very knowledgeable and trusting. So, Find somebody like that and you can just go to and ask any kind of question and they would not make you feel stupid or dumb because well, there's no such thing as a stupid question, especially in nursing or healthcare. Um, but yeah, find someone who you can trust, who you can you value their opinions. If you're questioning anything while you're working, always go to your charge nurse. <laughs> like always go to your charge nurse and ask like, hey, am I doing this right? Or hey, am I supposed to be doing this? Or, hey, um, this provider just said we're supposed to be doing this. Is that true? More than likely, it's not because some providers be trying. <laughs> but I won't get into that. The last and final tip, number 10, the most important tip. There is, if you guys did not take anything from this video, um, anything at all, this tip is very important. And that is... Take care of yourself. Nursing can be physically 
emotionally, mentally, psychologically demanding. <laughs> you do not want to fall prey to the routine of nursing to where you become burnt out pretty quickly in your career. And so take care of yourself. Make sure you're eating your meals during the day. Make sure you're getting enough rest at night. Make sure you're finding time for finding time for activities that make you happy, um, activities that can help you relax, activities that helps rejuvenate you and give you energy, and just makes you happy overall outside of work. And just drink enough water during your shifts and outside of your shifts. But most importantly, during your shifts, your kidneys are crying because you're not giving it what it needs. So just drink your water, eat your vegetables, eat all your foods, all your nutrients, and find happiness within yourself so that you can give happiness out to the world because you're the most important person there is. And if you do not take care of yourself, you cannot take care of anybody else. So, and with that being said, what are your favorite self-care routines? Let's share them down below. And if you guys want me to make a video of my routine after work, I will be gladly and happy to make that. But let me know in the comment below. Um, I hope you find these tips very helpful and hope that they inspired you to be the best nurse that you can be. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Until next time, keep learning, keep caring, and stay blessed. Bye, guys. Wow.